Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today I'm going to show you a new offering from Reich Knife that uh, definitely heads on over into the exotic or art knife type of category. And I've had the wonderful opportunity recently to bring out a lot of different Reich Knives, uh, mainly because a good buddy of mine, Derek, had sent me a whole bunch out of his collection that I was able to share in a, a guest blade segment and show a few different uh, artistic representations of their amazing machining. Today we're going to be looking at something quite a bit different. This is the SO5P. Now I know it says Damasteel on here, don't get too excited, or set yourself up for a different expectation, I should say, because I think what's actually on here is more exciting than what we typically see in standard Damasteel. Because what's in this box is quite a big surprise. Here's the zippered pouch it will arrive in. Here is the knife. And you've got a cleaning cloth in here. No, is there additional hardware? Yes or no? No, nothing else but the microfiber cleaning cloth. And here is the knife. Now, it's going to have a few fingerprints on it because I've already done uh, quite a bit of photography on it, and I have carried it a few times and played with it. And I am so utterly amazed at this knife at $550. Now, I know a lot of people just gasped, and they, uh, they farted a little bit while they were clutching their pearls. $550 for a folding knife? And then other people go in. $550? for a Chinese-made folding knife, you're insane. Not at all. For what this knife has in it, in just the raw materials, I think the $550 is pretty darn low. Then you factor in the mastery in which this was made, and you feel the incredible action, the smoothness, and the way that it glides, and you realize that Reich is absolutely one of the top tier manufactured production companies. And here is something that honestly almost nobody else in the production segment is doing. A true mosaic Damascus. Now, again, on their website, as well as Cthulhu's website and Pretty much every retailer that's going to be selling them, it is going to say Damasteel for the blade. Damasteel does not offer a mosaic Damascus. And I'm unaware of a way that you could buy individual billets of Damasteel and then forge it yourself into a mosaic. I just don't see it happening, especially when you get into some very particular patterns like we're seeing here. I mean, you might be able to make a few waves or a few W's, possibly. But I also don't know if you would actually be able to forge weld them together from the assembled or the, the forged billets that you're getting directly from Damasteel. So I refuse to call this Damasteel for that reason. Now, when I reached out to Ian from Katuo USA, he was going to talk to Richard Wu, who owns... Reich Knife. He is their end-all, be-all when it comes to Reich Knife. And he was supposed to get a response for me, so I had some 100% guaranteed definite information. And I just didn't want to keep waiting. I've had this knife now for weeks. And honestly, I've been carrying it, and I want to keep carrying it. And I don't want to show a knife in a review that already has, you know, carry marks on it, beauty marks, scars. I want it to look as new and uh, as good looking as possible to represent the product as it arrives when it's new. So to keep myself from waiting any further and so I can continue to get my enjoyment out of it, here we go. We're going to start off with the TLDW, then we'll get into the specs. In the specs, we'll discuss Mosaic Damascus in a little bit more detail, and then I'll give you my final thoughts and the full review portion at the end. Oh, man, this thing is just flat out gorgeous. 
Uh, I would have to say that this is probably the most beautiful knife I've brought out for 2023. And I've had a chance to review a lot of really good looking knives this year. I really, really have. Okay, TLDW, pros and cons. First pro is going to be the overall shape and profile. Let's go ahead and get that back open. I love the shape of the handle. I love the recurve and the very, very long and defined harpoon that's on the blade. I think it looks fantastic. Looks very aggressive, yet still somehow looks elegant at the same time. This is a really sexy looking knife. Number two is going to be ergonomics that go along with the way this is shaped. The flow of that handle. They've got a little finger choil here and then a little thumb depression here so you can choke up on it. Well, this is not going to be one of your EDC hard cutting task knives. It's going to be more of a uh, presentation piece or it's going to be more of a dress carry. You still have the ability to choke up. And if you want to do some actual work with this blade, you certainly can. Uh, another pro for me is going to be the very tasteful touches that have been done in the Mokutai. So all of your hardware is T8 anodized blue, and then you have the Chad Nichols Mokutai pocket clip, the Mokutai backspacer, and that on either side of it is going to have uh, bronze anodized titanium. And then you have the pivot inlay done in Mokutai as well. It is engraved with the Reich knife logo. But most of the time you won't see that because the light is going to dance off of the, the heat colored patterning in the Mokutai. It's just, it's just so classy. It's just so elegant. And uh, don't mind me, the blade dropped on me a little bit. Normally when you're holding it, you're, you're, you're not going to unlock it from back here like I did earlier. And then the flipper tab will actually hit your thumb and prevent the blade from dropping on you. But mine dropped on me, and unfortunately, with the, the recent health scare that I just had, I'm on blood thinners now, so that's going to continue to bleed probably for the duration of this video and the rest of the afternoon. Anyway, I digress. So another big plus is going to be the action. It's got a nice crisp detent unbelievably smooth closing action. Now, when I first got it, it wasn't completely drop shut. You had to give it a couple little wiggles and it would drop shut. But as I was breaking it in by putting an ever so slight, tiny, tiny little dab of medium weight lubrication oil on the detent ball and then running the action a few dozen times to wear in the detent track into the blade, it began just dropping closed, just so amazingly smooth. So very, very impressed by the action. It feels like a tremendously more expensive knife than it already is, even just with that. Okay, now for the cons. There aren't really a lot of cons overall, but I'm going to say this. If you're not buying the knife for the right reasons, you might have a couple of cons. Again, if you're buying this as, <clears throat> as a collector's piece, as a display piece, as a dress carry piece, you're going to love everything about it. It is jaw-dropping. It makes an enormous impact when it's in your hand and you're showing it off. But if you're buying it to actually, I don't know, take to the work site and, and actually be a hard-use cutter, I don't know why you would, but... Uh, your con on that would be that you're going to have a bit of a speed bump between this recurve and this convex curve for the elongated tip. So it's not going to cut cleanly through something, especially if it's thicker, like uh, cardboard or something. And honestly, even if it's thin, because you're just going to end up tearing that material, like if you were cutting like, I don't know, like a hamburger wrapper or something. And I know that seems like a very obscure thing to bring up, but that's something we used to do uh, between us YouTubers every now and then as we would do these challenges of taking like a McDonald's hamburger wrapper because they're so, so thin and they're wax covered. So if the knife wasn't laser sharp, 
it would start snagging and immediately show where it had issues if it had a burr or the edge was rolled over or something. So it would catch right here and not perform a clean cut all the way down the blade. So just be aware of that. But that's not why you're buying this knife. That's not really a con. Um, if there was a con from me, it would be the fact that it is mislabeled as Damasteel. Uh, and if I'm wrong, I am more than happy to, uh, if, if I get that information from Richard and he says, no, we found a special method of taking billets of Damasteel and creating these mosaic patterns that I'm more than happy to come back and, and put a note on this video and say, hey, I was wrong. It is Damasteel. But from my experience and from uh, knowing how the, the mosaics are made, I find it highly unlikely that they're taking Damasteel and making the mosaic. Again, with these very specific patterns on there especially. Oops, didn't mean to bump the camera there. And the patterns really are nice. I think it's it's more like a... Uh, it's more like a quilt of many patterns. There's a lot going on in this mosaic. I think I would have liked to have seen something maybe like this pattern here repeating over and over or this stacked pattern here. But to have the, you got Chinese symbols, you've got some uh, wavy uh, four directional squares. You have some wavy squares there. You have so many different patterns. It is like a, a quilt patchwork. But it is elegant. It is beautiful. There's a lot going on. It's an insane amount of work that went into creating this. But yeah, uh, for for me, uh, as a reviewer, it's difficult to come out here and you want to give all the proper information. So you want to use the information that the manufacturer or maker provides and you got to hope that that is going to be as accurate as possible. Aside from that, I personally don't have any cons with it. I think there are going to be some people out there that would look at the, the taper toward the rear of the knife and the, the slick blasted finish on there. They might go, well, it's a little bit too slippery. But again, you're not using this for hard use cutting tasks. So I doubt that that's really ever going to be an issue. And if I had a justifiable con, it would be the fact that uh, they don't have a lot of access to the lock bar here. I would have loved to have seen the presentation scale cut away just a little bit so you didn't have to go into the lock channel in order to get to the lock. Uh, but honestly, but that's, that's one con out of this entire knife. So I think that they did pretty damn good. All right, let's get into the specs very quickly here. And then we'll get into my personal thoughts and the actual review portion. Overall length is 8.27 inches, blade length of 3.54 inches. That's not too bad, it's still fairly compact. Uh, the thickness on the blade stock is 160 thou thick, which is four millimeters as I understand it. And uh, the blade material is mosaic Damascus. Handle material 6AL4V titanium, weight of 4.94 ounces, so it does have a good amount of heft to it, good amount of chunk to it. All the hardware is T8 titanium anodized. And then your backspacer pivot and clip are going to be the Chad Nichols Mokutai. One of the other things that I love personally about this is how it is predominantly no hardware on the presentation side. All you have is this very fancy pivot in the Mokutai. You have no visible screws on this side, so it's a very clean, love that clean look to it. Now you get to the back side, and you see the hardware that's actually being used. This hardware actually goes all the way through, so it will go through the back spacer, and then it is threaded on the inside of this presentation scale. So it's all assembled from one side so that this side can be as perfectly clean and uncluttered as possible. What a beautiful, beautiful design. And I'm really glad they did that because you've got so much going on in the blade and you want people to focus on the blade that it, it wouldn't look good if they had a whole bunch of hardware taking your attention away on that titanium. 
as mentioned before, they did a beautiful job with the finishing. It's very smooth, very, very slick feeling. It looks fantastic. Oh, that action. It's impossible not to fall in love with this knife, just opening it and closing it. Even if this were just a regular satin blade in M390, I think it would be fantastic. But coming out here in such an incredible display, I, I think really shows what Reich is all about. They're not just out here making run-of-the-mill knives like so many other brands are doing. And yes, they do have some very simple designs that aren't very flashy, that aren't very crazy. But it's very clear that Richard enjoys pushing things to the limit on artistic representations of his personal flavor. And man, he pushes it really, really as far as you can go in a production knife and still make it somewhat affordable. I mean, let's face it, if this were a custom knife from a, a handmade U.S. custom knife maker, or really anywhere in the world, using all this Mokutai, using this or any Mosaic Damascus, made to this degree of perfection, fit and finish, and action, you'd be somewhere around two to $3,000. And if you get into like a big name, let's say it was somebody like uh, Todd Begg, you'd be six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000. You know, so when I say five fifty dollars isn't a lot when you're considering what's going on here, it's not. It's an incredible piece. Now let's talk about Mosaic Damascus a little bit. So what you're looking at here is achieved by forge welding differing steels in differing thicknesses and ones that will be darker and lighter than the others once they're cut away, once they're cleaned up, and obviously, of course, once they're acid etched in, in ferric chloride. So that's what's going to give you that two-tone pattern. Now, this is a very monochromatic look. They may have gone back and polished over it so that the, you see these dark gray areas here? Instead of them being black, they're dark gray, so you have dark gray and light gray. I definitely am from the school that I would prefer it to be black and silver, but they did still a gorgeous, gorgeous job. Now, I find it interesting that they went with that monochromatic look because most makers... Investing this much time and money into doing a mosaic Damascus would have likely niter blued it. So you would have gotten that very rich, rich bluing from to excuse me, to show the pattern in this steel. And this is something that, that I have a good amount of experience with, something that I've done quite often. I'll move this to the side here just so I could pop up some pictures of customs that I've personally made where uh, I had intended from the beginning to niter blue them. And you do have to make that decision before you heat treat the knife because there, there's varying temperatures that you can heat treat and temper your steel at. And you would definitely want to be on the high side of that so that you're protecting that steel and you're protecting the integrity uh, because you know you're going to be subjecting it to about 700 degrees of hot, hot salt bath in order to do the nit niter bluing. So, you know, in, in the case of, of this Reich knife here, maybe they, they hadn't decided or they decide they're just going to do some regular etching and polishing and things. So I couldn't take this blade and then go niter blue it to make it fancier because I would be blowing it way past its temper and it would never hold an edge. It would be almost not butter soft, but it would, it would cut a couple of things and then it'd have to be resharpened. So that wouldn't be a good idea. But I find it strange that they didn't choose to do the niter bluing on. I think it would have looked brilliant, but it also may have been overkill for most people. Blued Damascus is an acquired taste. Not all collectors are going to want to have a blued Damascus blade. So anyway, that's my thoughts on that. So with the Mosaic Damascus, they're basically forge welding all those different steels. They're, they're making the billets. They're stacking them. They're, they're envisioning the pattern beforehand. And once they've forge welded all those pieces, what I want to do is I want to insert some video here. It may not line up exactly to the specific part I'm talking about as to what's going on on screen because I don't have it in front of me. 
But there's a good video on YouTube that shows how uh, Mosaic Damascus is made. Going from stacking the small billets to forge welding everything, pressing everything. And once you started pressing it, you're starting to set that pattern. And then you're going to continue pressing it from all angles till you get a cube, basically. Uh, a lot of people are going to do it in... in um, uh, excuse me, in a, in a canister. They might do a canister Damascus instead. But you could take those flat billets and you can keep pressing them and uh, you're basically, you can keep chopping them and cutting them and folding them and bringing them back together. Lots of cutting, pressing, restacking, fitting together and then press more into the desired pattern. And what you may end up doing and it has been some of the, the very popular repetitive patterns, like a, like a starburst pattern or something, is you're going to take these four square billets that you've made here, these four, not really cubes because they're so long, I don't know that you can call them cubes, and then you're going to place them together, you know, one, two, three, four, you're going to place them together, and you're going to see that pattern forming that you really, really want. Then you're going to forge well those together. Then you're going to draw that out and you're going to make your blade length billet out of that. And you're going to very carefully set where you want that pattern to run in the blade. When you forge it down, you cut it down, you center it or you decenter it wherever you're going to put it uh, down the length of the blade to create the pattern you want especially after you've ground it. You're going to have a certain look that you want. Maybe you only want that pattern on the bevels or you want the pattern to disappear down the bevel. You want the pattern only to be in the, the flats area. So you know what you're grinding. You know where you're going to set it at and you get to create that. But most are going to be very, very repetitive patterns like this or something similar where the whole knife is going to have that pattern. And that's a lot more work than just simply forging a Damascus blade. Well, that's also a lot of hard work when you take in all of the, the work that goes into planning the pattern that you want. Cutting, pressing, uh, crushing the corners, squeezing everything together, and then making the squares or the blocks, putting those blocks together to, and, and envisioning that pattern coming out of the, the, the center of them. And doing all that work, it's it's incredible to think about all of that work that's going to go into what ends up being a production knife. Now, I don't know if Reich themselves are making the mosaic or they just simply purchased the billets of Damascus elsewhere, which would be a very common practice with any manufactured knife. Almost any time you see a Damascus knife from anybody, from Riyadh, from Reich, from We, from anybody, you're, you're seeing, you know, it could be Chad Nichols Damascus, it could be Dama Steel, it could be Eggerling Damascus, it could be any number of different Damascus where they're purchasing the billets and then simply doing stock removal to create the blades. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So whether Reich made this particular Damascus or not doesn't really matter. But I find it interesting that it's so intricate and it's so detailed and there's so much work that has been done to this and the polishing and the finishing. So much beautiful work has been done on this that it is a collector's piece. It is something that I think that if you're serious about owning beautiful collector's knives in your collection, that you should certainly consider one of these. If it's a knife that you're going to carry on occasion, it's one that you'll absolutely be proud to have in your pocket. You're going to pull it out and you're going to fidget with it and you're going to just go to town with the, uh, the action on this thing. And when you're showing it off and, and people see all the beautiful Mokutai touches on there, for that little splash of color from an otherwise very monochromatic scheme. I think overall, this is one of the most beautiful knives released in a production knife all year long by anyone at any price range. And I think Reich is absolutely knocking it out of the park this year. Just killing it. Anyway, them's my thoughts. 
Let me know down below if you agree, if you would even buy a knife that has Mosaic Damascus. There may be people out there who go, no, I use my knives so much, there's no way. But again, as I stressed before, this is not a user type of knife. It's not going to be your EDC. But for those that appreciate the Mosaic Damascus, you speak up as well. Tell people why you like it. Anyway, I'm out of here, and I'll see you guys on the next video.